bookshop, bookshop, bookshop. Barn shop. Barber, come on now. Looking for... Ah! Ha! <laughs> I knew where it was. The whole time. I knew. <laughs> How are you, murderer? Do you have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Okay, maybe you, murderer. Just watch him. Yes, yeah, just watch him. Look at your eyeballs. Effects of overwork. Okay. What about your ear? Your hair? Your chin? Your dirty hands? Yeah, there we go. Ink. Something's wrong with you. I just gotta figure it out. Well. Well, how about that? <laughs> Sore left leg. Okay. That's your shoes. What's going on with your shoes? High heels. Wants to look taller. Okay. There's a workaholic. Okay. Mr. Barnes has developed a limp and has large bangs under his eyes. The result, long hours of intense work. He's not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hand suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. Possible blackmail victim. Yeah. Mr. Barnes being threatened by someone and might be involved in a plot against me. Yeah. That's where Mr. I'm leaning. Barnes, a word. Oh, for goodness sake. Just... Who, uh... Who goes there? <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. <laughs> Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am... Deep in the weeds with work. How about we, uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it and pay later. <laughs> I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. Yeah, we will. We will. He's being blackmailed. The is broken. Recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Hmm. So, so Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Yeah. Cute puppy. Big old flappy ears. Oh, what am I looking for? There's a super genius I already know. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. Hmm. But I don't know. So tell me, Sherlock. Ooh, investigating things. That, that looks like something. Is that not a thing? No? What about you? Exotic plants. Already. Everlasting plants for an everlasting love. Can I flip the pages? No? Okay. Well, at least I see it. I got it in the catalog. I could probably get a better look at it in there. See what's going on here. Who? Basics Ooh. of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Hmm. All right. Let's keep looking for a second. I want to see if there's anything awesome. Well, we don't need the money. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Going on out there. Finest view London has to offer. 
Hmm. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Hmm. What's going on with these books? An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. Yeah, okay. So this guy's got, like, a mysterious female or male? I don't know. I figured, like, a woman might bring him flowers? You know, like, how? Or is he, like, crushing on a woman and then they just kind of dumped him? I don't know. What's with the Egyptian stuff? Are we going to Egypt? Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. What? Okay. You there. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. What am I missing? Well, let's go outside and see if we can... Wait, what do you have to say? We're looking for a cactus needle in a haystack. Hmm. A spine in a book stack? No, come on, Watson, think. <laughs> Alright, let's go outside for a second. Me there. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. You won't tell me anything, huh? I should have worn something warmer. Dang it. Thought I was onto something. But no. I'm just not that good at investigating. A lot of flowers. What's going on here? Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. Hmm. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Ah, cactus. Well, this is interesting. The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Pot is damaged. That's the blow was severe, but softened by something. Quite the loud bang was. Familiar spine. Is this what I found in my dustbin? It is. Hey, We're onto something. To your fancy, Mr. Holmes. I'm gonna stare at you. What's up with your mouth? Or concealment? Concealment. Honoring deceased husband. Let's see. The hat. Got a dog. What about your gloves? Nothing with your gloves. Your shoes. Changed shoes upon arrival. What about that dog? Unusual for work attire. Huh. Avoids eye contact or distract it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh -oh. Yeah, we're going to say still grieving. Yeah, still grieving. Yeah. My condolences, Mrs. Fleming. Mr. Holmes? Your husband's death. You're clearly still in mourning. Oh, no. I loved him more than anything, of course, but that was some time ago now. Life goes on. A lesson we all learn, one way or another. Hmm. Okay, where is that one at? Yeah, correct thing. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. So you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Oh. Well, now that's interesting. 
What do you make of the flowers in there the shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. You're in on it too. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? There we yes. go. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. Hmm. Okay, well now we have more stuff. Let's go inside. And this. There we go. He's in love with Miss Fleming. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from the catalog on his counter. Questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside 221B Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. Cool. Hmm. I uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. Mm. The new cactus. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. Uh oh. And the paper. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. <laughs> Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. <laughs> so, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus and your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. <laughs> your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. I knew what to do. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtrusive signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, <laughs> of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. <laughs> I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, <laughs> Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. Yeah, we got the paper. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there for now, guys. So don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. Be sure to hit the subscribe, join, and bell button. And we'll catch you in the next one. Come, Dr. Watson. 
Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming.